So in this video, we're going to be looking at the ideal gas equation and how we can actually calculate values in the ideal gas equation, such as moles. Now, starting off, before we get into that, we need to look at our units and be confident in changing our units over from one to another, right? Now, in terms of the ideal gas equation, you need to deal with temperature in Kelvin. You need to deal with volume of any gas in meters cubed. You need to deal with pressure in pascals as well. And then in further calculations, you might actually use masses. Just remember from before that you always deal with masses in grams as well so you need to be able to convert that right now starting off right all of these pretty much seem familiar where you're dividing or times in by a thousand and i always remember if the unit is getting bigger let's say going from decimeters cubed to meters cubed we know the number is actually going to get smaller if we were to look at temperature though, that's the only unfamiliar one that you've not actually seen yet. If you were to look at temperature, we deal with temperature in Kelvin. And to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, all we're going to do is we're going to add 273. And let's say if we were to calculate temperature in degrees Celsius to go from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, right? All we do is subtract 273 itself as well. Now moving on, right? I've got a task for you to do and I want you to pause the video and have a go at the following conversions. So yeah, starting off with the first one, right, if I've got zero degrees Celsius, all I'm going to do to that is I'm going to add 273, right, to make that Kelvin. And so I end up with 273 Kelvin itself for the first one. The next one, 25 degrees Celsius, I'm just going to add 273 to that to turn it into Kelvin. And what I should end up with is a value of 298 Kelvin. Now in the next one, I'm just going to add again 273. And what I end up with is, in this case, 503.1 Kelvin itself. And look at the next three we need to convert the following units to degrees celsius this time from kelvin and to do that i'm just going to subtract 273 and so for the first one for zero kelvin i end up with minus 273 degrees celsius if i were to do that for the next one i subtract 273 and i end up with minus and then it's going to be 248 degrees celsius in this case the next one again subtract 273 and then i end up with 59 degrees celsius itself yeah so pretty straightforward. All we're doing is converting from one unit to another by adding or subtracting 273. So moving on, right, why do we actually need to do all of this? Well, we need to be able to calculate either the pressure, the volume, the number of moles, the gas constant or temperature using the ideal gas equation. And we actually use this when we don't actually have room temperature and pressure or the molar gas volume itself, right? Now, when we look at pressure, we need to make sure that we've got the units of Pascal's volume we're dealing with meters cubed in every other equation that you deal with in chemistry volume will always be decimeters cubed but in this case it's going to be meters cubed moles the amount of substance and then you've got the gas constant which is going to be joules and then it's going to be per kelvin and then it's going to be per mole then you've got temperature, which of course is going to be in Kelvin as well, right? So yeah, uh, how do I actually rearrange this then to find different values? Well, just be aware you could be rearranged to ask anything, right? Whether it's pressure, volume, the amount of substance in moles, uh, the gas constant or temperature as well. And to rearrange this, right, you just need to get the value, let's say P, we're trying to find pressure. I divide both sides by volume and what I end up with is P is equal to, and then it's going to be NRT over V. What but if I were to find V instead, well, again, I'm just going to divide by P on both sides. So I end up with the volume being equal to, and then it's going to be NRT, and then it's going to be over P. What about if I were to find the number of moles, which is a pretty common one? Well, what I actually do in this case is I divide both sides by RT, right, to find moles. And so that's going to be N is equal to, and it's going to be PV over RT. And then what about if I were to find the rare one, which is the gas constant? That's just going to be R is equal to, divide both sides by NT. I end up with PV over NT itself. What about if I were to find temperature? Well, temperature is quite a common one as well. Well, temperature is just going to be equal to PV. And then to get temperature on its own, I need to divide both sides by NR itself as well. And there's a five possible rearrangements we can get using some simple math skills itself. So yeah, moving on from that then, let's look at an example. We're asked to calculate the pressure, right, at which 0 0.4 moles of argon gas will occupy 
uh, 0.01 meters cubed at 298 Kelvin itself, right? So straight away, I know here that I need to use an ideal gas equation because I'm not given, first of all, room temperature and pressure, right? I've actually been given values in terms of temperature, volume, uh, the amount of substance in moles as well, and mass to calculate pressure. And I'm also not given the molar gas volume as well. So I know I need to use the ideal gas equation. Now, if that's the case, right, after that brief metacognition, we've got, again, P V N R T and what I recommend that you do is is that you write this along the side because any unit conversions becomes obvious to the examiner and you get the mark. So pressure is what we need to find, right? So I put a question mark there. Uh, volume is given to us as zero point zero one meters cubed. Uh, we're given the amount of substance in moles, which is zero point four zero moles, and then we're also given the gas constant on our data sheet which is 8.314 itself and that's going to be joules per kelvin per mole and then we've also got a temperature which is in kelvin already that's 298 right so normally you get a mark if you need to rearrange any units itself which in this case we don't the next thing is is i need to be able to rearrange my equation to get pressure as a subject so now pv is equal to nrt we know that is going to become right p is equal to dividing by volume on both sides nrt and then it's going to be over v itself right and all i'm going to do i'm going to keep everything on a nice straightforward line i'm going to sub in my values so i end up with 0 0.4 times by the gas constant of 8.314 and then that's going to be times by the temperature which is 298 and then i'm going to divide all of that by the volume which in this case is going to be 0 0.01 I do that, I put that in my calculator, and what I should actually end up with is a value of, to three significant figures, I end up with 991, and then I'm going to end up with 00. zero. So I end up with, right, 99,000 and 100, and that's going to be Pascal's itself. And you get one mark for actually rearranging it over here, one mark for submitting your values, and one mark for calculating your answer as well. Yeah, so just be aware of that to lay it out like this every single time, right? Now I've got one for you to try, right? I want you to try the following. Pause the video and then resume once you're ready to look at the answer. So in this question, right, we're told when vaporized 0 0.1881 grams of compound D produces 82.5 centimetres cubed of gas at 101 kilopascals and 373 Kelvin. We're asked to calculate the amount of substance in moles of compound D itself, right? So first of all, we know the following, that we've got a PV NRT uh, calculation over here, right? An ideal gas calculation. And to look at pressure to begin with, it's in kilopascals. So to convert that into uh, pascals, I'm going to take 101 and then I'm going to times it by 10 to the power of 3 itself, right? And that's going to be my pressure in pascals. Volume, we're given volume in centimetres cubed, which we know. We need to divide by a thousand, then divide by a thousand again, or divide by a million to actually find the volume in metres cubed. And that leaves us with 82.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres cubed. If I were to look at the number of moles, that's what we're calculating. We can leave that blank. The gas constant, which is going to be 8.314. And then that's going to be joules per Kelvin per mole. And then temperature is 373. We don't need to worry about that. So to start off with, you get a mark here for your units. And then if I were to look at the ideal gas equation, we've got PV equals NRT. And we're going to rearrange this time to find N by dividing both sides by RT. So N is equal to PV over RT. RT. And then we're going to take our pressure. I'm going to use some brackets here as well on the fraction button. I've got 101 times 10 to the power of 3. And then I'm going to times that right by my volume, which is going to be 82.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6, right? Again, my fraction button comes into place over here. So this is going under the top section. And on the bottom section, I'm going to have the gas constant of 8.314 times by temperature in Kelvin, which is 373 itself as well. Now, I'll put that in my calculator. And what I end up with is to three significant figures in this case, because that's our least accurate value, right? I end up with 2.69 times 10 to the power of minus three moles itself as well. So again, right, I get a mark for rearranging, mark for submitting my values, and then a mark for actually getting my answer over here as well. Now, a follow-up question over here could actually be, okay, you've got this mass over here, right? You've got the number of moles that you've calculated over here. Now find the MR of this substance and predict its identity. And that's what's going to happen in our next question, which I want you to have a go at right now.
So yeah, in this question, we're told a gas cylinder has a gas volume of 9.39 decimeters cubed. We're told the gas cylinder holds 1.69 kilograms of a gas at a pressure of 1.37 times 10 to the power of 7 at 20 degrees Celsius as well. We're asked to determine the molar mass and the possible identity of the gas as well, right? Now, straight away, we know that to calculate molar mass, right, so far, we've come across this as taking the mass and then dividing by the number of moles itself as well. But we've got mass over here. We don't actually have a amount of substance, so we don't have the number of moles. So what can we actually do? So we've actually got an ideal gas calculation over here, right, where we've got PV and RT, all the values and all the hints to kind of use the ideal gas equation in this case. And we can find the number of moles, right, and then work out a value for MR. Now, starting off, I know that pressure in this case is given to me in pascals. So that's going to be 1.37 times 10 to the power of 7 pascals itself. If I look at volume, volume is going to be in decimeters cubed in this case. Again, we need it in meters cubed, so that's going to be 9.39. And then I'm going to times that by 10 to the power of minus 3. So I'm going to divide by 1,000, right? And I end up with something that looks like that. And that's going to be meters cubed as well. If I were to look at the gas constant, 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. And then temperature, it's in degrees Celsius over here. We need to change that to Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273 to that. And what I end up with is 293 Kelvin itself. Now that I've got my values, I take my ideal gas equation, which is PV and RT, and then I end up rearranging to find a value for N by dividing both sides by RT. And so I end up with N is equal to PV over RT. And then I'm going to sub in my values. So I've got 1.37 times 10 to the power of 7 pascals. That's going to be times by a value of 9.39 times 10 to the power of minus 3. My volume, I'm going to divide by 8.314 and then times that by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 293 itself. I put that in my calculator and what I end up with is a massive answer of 52.8 moles, which sounds about right, to be honest. Now, that number might seem a bit large, but just remember you're dealing with kilograms in this case, not grams, right? So, yeah, in that case, if I were to find the molar mass, right, I'm going to have to take the mass in grams, right? So, I need to convert this over here. So, I need to do 1.69 times by a 1,000, and then that gives me my uh, grams of my actual uh, gas itself. I'm going to divide by 52.8 itself, put that in my calculator and i end up with a value of 32.0 itself and that's going to be grams per mole in terms of the units right so yeah uh what gas is this actually going to be well look at the periodic table the right hand side that's going to be your gases your non-metals and stuff think about right some common gases that you've come across before the only one i can actually think of uh, it's a diatomic molecule as well is going to be oxygen gas which is o2 so again in terms of marks you get one for your uh, conversions over here one for rearranging the equation subbing in the values and getting an answer one over here for actually calculating the mr and then one for calculating or working out the actual gas itself so yeah a slightly trickier um, ideal gas calculation question feel free to pause the video and have a go at this one right so you might need some extra steps over here so yeah, looking at this question then, we're told about sodium azide and this has been used in car airbags, right? Now, car airbags, they inflate when sodium azide decomposes to form nitrogen gas itself. And we're told a 16 decimeter cubed airbag is inflated at 17 degrees Celsius. The pressure in the inflated airbag is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. And we're asked to calculate the mass of sodium azide that has actually decomposed, giving our answer to three significant figures right now there's quite a lot of stuff going on in this question and we need to break it down bit by bit right because we're actually asked to calculate the mass of sodium azide and we're given some information about the ideal gas calculation itself right we're also given a balanced equation here which is some sort of hint that we might need to use stoichiometry now to begin with remember the ideal gas equation actually tells us about the volume right of gas actually produced in this question which is going to be of nitrogen right it talks about the temperature 
temperature of that gas, talks about the pressure of that gas, and it talks about the moles of that gas, which is the most important part itself. And first of all, we need to find the moles using the ideal gas calculation of nitrogen itself, that's step one. Then we need to use stoichiometry to find the moles of sodium azide, and then we need to use a simple calculation looking at the molar mass of sodium azide and find the actual mass right in grams of sodium azide itself that's going to be step three right so starting off right we need to think okay p v n r t and we need to think okay to find right molar mass we need moles to find the moles of sodium azide we need the moles of nitrogen and to find the moles of nitrogen right we need to rearrange our p v n r t equation to get n as a subject itself so i'm going to put a question mark there we're told the pressure is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. The volume, in this case, it's going to be 16 decimeters cubed. So in that case, right, if I were to divide by 1,000, I end up with 0 0.016. And that's going to be meters cubed, because remember, meters cubed is a key unit here. We've got the gas constant on our data sheet, which is just going to be 8.314. And then temperature, right, we've got 17 degrees Celsius. We add 273 to that, and we end up with 290 Kelvin itself, right? So you get one mark for your units over here. And we need to rearrange to find the number of moles. And I'm going to make it very specific by putting nitrogen as a subscript, because we're looking at the moles of gas total gas produced in this case which is just nitrogen so we can put nitrogen there and that's going to be equal to our rearrange ideal gas equation which we know is pv is equal to nrt and so i end up with pv divided by rt which is going to be equal to and then it's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 in brackets and then i'm going to have that times in right a value of 0 0.016 uh, meters cubed itself so i've got my pressure my volume and then i'm going to divide by my gas constant 8.314 times in that by 290 kelvin itself i do that i put that in my calculator and what i end up with is a value of 0 0.796 moles itself right so so far in this uh, question i've got one for rearranging uh, my actual uh, equation one for my units and then one for submitting my answers and then another mark for getting um you know my actual amount of substance in moles itself now the fifth mark is going to come from finding the number of moles of sodium azide in this case which is going to be NaN3 and we can see that we've got a three to two ratio right now if you're not that math savvy what I recommend is is that you divide by the number of moles of nitrogen which is three in this case to find one mole and then you times by two to find two moles of sodium azide so in that case I'm going to take 0 0.796 I'm going to divide by three and then I'm going to times by two, and what I actually end up with is 0 0.531 moles itself, right? So there's my next mark, right? Final mark comes from finding the mass of sodium azide as well. Notice how I'm very specific here, so I'm not getting confused with the mass of nitrogen gas instead. And to do that, right, I'm going to work out the molar mass of sodium azide, which is 65, and I'm going to times that by the number of moles. So I've got N times by MR, so that's going to be equal to, 0 0.531 and I'm going to times that by 65 and I end up with an answer to three significant figures as 34.5 grams yeah so there's my six mark question done and dusted you know nice and neat and that's how you get the maximum amount of marks when it comes to these questions